Hi, I'm James Hardiman, and uh, I'm 72 years old, and for most of that 72 years I've been depressed and anxious and frightened, and I think I've recently cracked that. And my wife was talking to a friend of ours, uh, and that friend said that they had also been like that, so they were interested to hear more. So this is the first of a number of short videos that will talk a bit about what happened to me. And I'm watching myself on the screen here and I can see that the screen is reflected in my glasses. So I'm going to take them off. That's a bit better. <clears throat> so what I want to talk about is something called the three principles. And when you first hear about the three principles, it's incredibly frustrating because people won't tell you what the three principles are because they say, uh, it won't help and you'll find yourself um, listening to what's being said and thinking ah yeah that's like dot 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 uh, and if that happens to you that's my fault I'm not explaining it right because it's not like dot 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 so <clears throat> what I want to talk about in this first video is what is a principle, not what are the prince, the three principles, but what is a principle. And I want to talk about insight because insight is incredibly important to squeezing benefit out of the three principles. Um, and I'm also going to talk a bit about my, my history with the three principles. So first of all, what is a principle? Well, gravity is a principle. Um, the sun-centered universe, the heliocentric universe, is a principle. Um, gravity, did I say gravity, um, is a principle. And probably E equals MC squared is a principle. Uh, and in each case, uh, what these things are, they are fundamental truths. So when Newton was sitting under his apple tree and was bonked on the head by an apple, this is probably an apocryphal tale, but it's a good metaphor, even if it is only an apocryphal tale. <clears throat> Nothing changed anywhere in the universe except in Newton's head. And he had um, an aha moment. Uh, he had an insight. He suddenly saw how this force called gravity worked. Uh, an apple came down. Before that, people had observed the effects of gravity since forever. You've only got to drop something and you observe the effects of gravity. Jump off a tall building and you'll observe the effects of gravity. Things fall because of gravity. And Probably before Newton, nobody had actually wondered why. It was just taken as a matter of fact. Things fall. If you drop them, they fall. But, Einstein, but Newton saw that things actually attracted one another. It wasn't just that the apple fell to Earth, but the Earth moved up to meet the apple. Because the Earth is immensely big, and the apple, by contrast, is very small, You'd see the apple move, but you wouldn't really see the earth move. And besides, there are other things acting on the earth. So how much the earth moved towards the apple was infinitesimal. But Newton suddenly got it. He suddenly went, ah, and he saw things differently. And the universe didn't change, the world didn't change, but the opportunities that we all had changed we would never have gone to the moon or flown in space or flown in airplanes without newton suddenly getting gravity and galileo before galileo it was pretty obvious to everybody that the sun went around the earth you only got to go outside and look up in the sky and you could see the sun going around the earth or at least you could see it coming up one side and going over the top and down the other side and it was pretty fair for most people to think that it went round underneath and came up the other side. What Galileo saw was when he looked at the, the information that he had, what scientists might call the data that he had, 
it didn't quite fit that model. And he had an aha moment when he suddenly realised, no, that's not it. It's that the Earth is going around the sun. Now, <clears throat> he kind of insulted a lot of people when he said that. Uh, and the church was pretty cross. But he was proved right. He had an aha moment. Einstein had a pretty much of an aha moment when he realised that energy and matter were interchangeable on a huge ratio. It doesn't take very much energy to be uh, much matter to convert it into energy to get a huge amount of energy. And the people of Hiroshima and Nagasaki can attest to that. All these people had an aha moment. Uh, they didn't work it out. They had a lot of information a lot of data and they probably spent a lot of time cogitating but they suddenly had an aha and what they saw out of those ahas were fundamental truths not not theories but fundamental truths it is just a fundamental truth that the earth goes around the sun and the moon goes around the earth it's a fundamental truth that all matter exerts a pull on all other matter that's proportional to the amount of mass in the matter um, and we've since done experiments about that and we've all heard about the old thing that if you were to drop a feather and a cannonball in a perfect vacuum they'd fall at the same time because air resistance wouldn't be there and gravity would operate on them at the same amount um, and that's been taken as an act of faith until such time as spacemen went up to the moon where there's very, very little gravity and no air resistance. And I don't think they took a cannonball. They probably took a golf ball and a feather and did the experiment. Dropped them at the same time and they fell at the same speed. So this is sort of, I'm batting on a bit here, but it's quite important because what these people discovered when they had their aha moment, when they had their insight, were fundamental truths about the way the universe works. Well, back about 40, 50 years ago, something like that, a man, his name was Sidney Banks, he was a welder, he was from Glasgow in Scotland, but he happened to be living and working on the west coast of Canada, uh, and he'd been going to a number of personal growth type workshops um, and he suddenly had one of these insights, one of these aha moments. And he came up with three principles that all interact. And that's why this is called the three principles. Uh, and the three principles he came up with was mind, consciousness and thought. And what he suddenly realized was that these three principles interacted to give people their sense of the world, their sense of reality. And another part of his aha was that he saw that for most people, they saw this back to front. Inside out, there's a man called Michael Neal who works in this area quite a lot. And he coined the phrase, at least I think it was him that coined the phrase, he uses it a lot, the inside out revolution. Now what happens in the inside out revolution is we suddenly realize when we get to the aha that oh the way that i thought reality works isn't actually the way that it works most people think that something happens out there and that happens to us so you might look at this picture and think that's a nice picture that picture makes me happy no it doesn't that picture just sits there doing nothing. It might make you happy. You might look at it and think it's a beautiful picture. Somebody else might come in and think, don't like that picture very much. The reality that you're experiencing is as a result of your thoughts. And that was one of the big insights that Sid had. He realized that everything we realize is a result of our thoughts. It's become a bit of a joke inside the 3P community that if you're pissed off with something, and you might be very, very pissed off with it, somebody's likely to say, 
you're not upset with that, you just think you are. Well, that's not terribly helpful. When I first heard of the three principles, I was on a course to learn NLP. Strange that I was there because I'd been on a million courses to learn NLP with the people who invented NLP. But my wife Susan, despite having an awful lot of training in personal growth and psychotherapy and all that sort of stuff, she was a professional psychotherapist for many years, she'd never done a course on NLP. Uh, and we had a friend who was a very successful NLP trainer, and he offered us a two-for-one deal. So if Susan paid to go on his NLP course, I could come along for free and we'd learn together. And the reason that we mainly wanted to do that is so that we had some common language, because sometimes I would see things and interpret them in NLP terms and she wouldn't know what I was talking about. So we went on this course, and the very first thing that the guy said is, this is the last NLP course that I'm ever going to run. Oh, why? Well, because I found something which pretty much cancels out NLP and anything else I've ever done and works better. Works and better is not really the right language to use. But anyway, what he was talking about was the three principles. Susan had heard a bit about it before because she'd read one of the books that Michael Neal has written about the three principles, but it was all completely new to me. Actually, Susan says she has told me about it before, but it must have been something that just went over my head and I didn't take on board. But when this chap David started talking about the three principles, at some level I got that this was incredibly important to me. I didn't get how it was incredibly important to me, and it was very different from other things I'd come across. During my life, because I've been depressed and anxious and fearful for so long, anything that looks like that might help, I've kind of grabbed and learnt and absorbed, and before very long I'd be running classes in it. And that was counselling and co-counselling and assertiveness and emotional freedom technique and NLP and a dozen different things. And in every case, I got it very, very quickly, understood it very quickly, started teaching other people very, very quickly. Uh, I helped a lot of people, and each of those things helped me a bit, but they kind of stopped working after a bit. But the three principles was weird. I'd, I'd go on courses, and I'd read books, and I'd watch things on YouTube, and I'd I'd understand, but I didn't have that aha moment. Things didn't change for me. And people would say to me, oh, that's just your thinking. And I'd go, thank you very much. I'm not getting it. But year after year, I would go to the International Three Principles Conference and have a good time and meet some lovely people and hear some interesting things. Um, and after a bit, I thought, after five years, actually, I thought, what am I still doing here? I need to get some one-to-one -one training. And I found a, a lovely lady who lives in Jerusalem, Hannah, um, and I paid her an eye-watering amount of money. Well, by my standards, an eye-watering amount of money. And had some, uh, some mentoring, some tutoring from her via uh, video link from Jerusalem. And I got it. Something happened, something clicked, and all of a sudden I could see that when I was full of dark thoughts, they were just dark thoughts that I was making up. Now the thing about thoughts is that you can't, you can't stop them coming, you can't change your thoughts, they just come. If you ever learn to meditate, one of the things they'll say is thoughts will come, there's nothing you can do about it, just live with it. But you don't have to believe them. You don't have to act upon them. There are people who go into prisons and teach the three principles or work with the three principles with some really serious criminals, people who've murdered people. And in every case, those people suddenly go, oh, I had a thought about how that person was hurting me. And what came out of that was some behavior. And I just had to kill them. Uh, I recently read a book uh, called The Reckoning. Um, 
a huge great long tome that starts off with this really quite nice guy going out one morning and shooting someone. He was quite convinced that he had to do it. Um, now, from the three principles point of view, we know that he didn't have to do it. And actually, when we get to the end of the book, we discover that he really didn't have to do it because what he thought that that other person had done, the person that he had to kill, it wasn't him that had done it. So... This is just a little introduction, and my timer says that I've just gone over 15 minutes, and I want to keep all these videos quite short. So I'm going to post this up to YouTube, and underneath I'm going to put a couple of links to YouTube videos by other people, which might help a bit. And then later on, not today, uh, I will make some other videos about the three principles, uh, and add those on so that there are a sequence and they hopefully will be of use to you. We can also, uh, I'm making this for a particular person but I won't say their name here because they might not want people to know that I'm doing it for them um, and anybody can watch it. Um, but we will have some face-to-face -face conversations, some one-to-one -one conversations um, where we can ask questions uh, and I'll also uh, later on post uh, links to books and courses and all sorts of things but i want to see if i can put out enough information to enable people to get their aha uh -huh and see that the world is different from the way they thought it was uh, and get relief from depression and anxiety and fear what we're aiming at is not happiness if you get happiness good but sort of inner peace so that the dark thoughts don't occupy you and make you feel like shit. That's it for now. See you later.